Hey everybody, hope you're having a great week. Welcome to another episode of Ant on Music. I'm your host, Ant. Uh, as always, this is a show that's dedicated to uh, my music collection, my tastes. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, I always ask everybody every week, you know, please click like, drop a comment. Uh, most importantly, smash that subscribe button and join the colony, right? Ants live in a colony. Want to make this colony big and strong. Uh, so this week, uh, what we're going to talk about is my trip to the Westchester um, CD and record show down at the Marriott in White Plains, New York. Uh, I was fortunate to make it out there again with my buddy Goose. Had a great morning, great afternoon. Uh, got a good hang-in. Got to pick up a couple of things that I've been looking for that weren't on my list of things to look for, but came across them and couldn't resist. Uh, also, a couple of things that came through in the mail as well. Uh, no box sets this week, not unless you consider the last thing kind of like a box set, it really isn't. Uh, also, in music news, they had the drop of the Record Store Day 2024 list. And let me tell you, it is outstanding. There is something on there for everyone as far as music is concerned. Whether you like pop, metal, prog, classic rock, jazz, there is something on there for you. Um, you know, go and check it out at Record Store Day 2024. They have a page on Facebook, and you can also go to their website as well. You can download it as a PDF or just look at the web. Uh, for most of the stuff that is uh, listed there, they do have photos of the uh, album sleeves, so you get an idea of what you're looking for when you actually go in to, to pick it up. Uh, and Record Store Day 2024 is on April 20th of this year, and uh, you know, I kind of think that's uh, going to be a good day, the day before Taylor Swift drops her new one, as well as Pearl Jam. They're going to release their Dark Matter album, and then they're going to go on tour. Uh, so let's get into it. We'll start off with what I grabbed at the record show. Uh, oddly enough, one of the first things I came across, actually the first thing I did come across, was this one. It's an oldie but a goodie. It came out back in 84. And that is the Hagar Schoen, Aronson, and Shreve album. You know, obviously, the two big stars here are Sammy Hagar and Neil Sean of Journey. Uh, this was while Hagar was still in his uh, solo career, you know, post Montrose, pre uh, Van Hagar or Van Halen. Uh, always loved this album. I have it on CD, but I've always wanted it on album. And I was lucky to come across at a very good price at the record show. Uh, to take a look at it, here is a picture of the Red Rock from Self and Company, Sean Aronson and Shreve. And here's a photo of them live on the back of the inner sleeve, as well as photos there on the back of the inner sleeve as well, on the outer sleeve, I should say. Uh, and the outstanding tracks for me on this are the one that kick it off, Top of the Rock, uh, also Giza. They do an outstanding cover of Procol Harm's Whiter Shade of Pale. Uh, I know this might sound like sacrilege. I actually prefer their version of it to the original, but I do. Um, other tracks, Valley of the Kings, My Hometown, He Will Understand, and a bunch of others. So I was ha happy to pick that up at the record show. Very happy to add that to my collection. Uh, next thing that I found, and I have this, I actually have this on cassette. Who remembers a time way back when, you know, in the 80s, when cassettes actually had a fragrance you would take off the shrink wrap on the uh on the cassette and it had a scent and this one was one of the ones that i had on cassette i think i still do it might be in the vault garage uh i have to go look but the cool thing about this was and i don't know why i didn't pick this up on vinyl at the time and this copy is sealed and we're going to do something i I don't normally do on something that's this old. We're gonna unseal it, okay? It's not in the most fantastic of shape, you know. It is. It is got a, a. It does have a cutout at the bottom, but the coolest thing about this, this is Twisted Sisters come out and play. All right, so you have the cover there. Get a better view without the shrink on. You have the back there with the boys in the band, and this is really like the last album that they had any sort of uh, momentum. You know, look at this. It's even got the original order form 
to grab Twisted Sister merch, including the video cassette that they were pushing at the time. Uh, on the inside, you know, photos of the band. As you can see, it's been notched down here. And lyrics on the back. So you got lyrics and liner notes on the inner sleeve. You know, like the Hagar, you know, from the 80s, it's basic black. There's no color. This is the original, original album. And this is the cool part about this. So, and this is really the reason why I picked it up. So I might as well enjoy it, right? So that's the point of uh, opening it. You've got a little pop-up here of D. How cool is that? D. Snyder coming out of the sewer right there on the cover of Twisted Sisters. Come out and play. Uh, this album had, uh, you know, typical, you know, stuff that Twisted Sister uh, was doing back then, Be Cruel to Your School. Title track, I Believe in Rock and Roll, and I Believe in You. Uh, Kill or Be Killed, their cover of Leader of the Pack, not really a favorite of mine, but, you know, it's on here. It's what they chose to do. Out on the Streets, Fire Still Burns, probably one of the better tracks on the album. And You Want What We Got, and uh, Looking Out for Number One. So that's Twisted Sister. With a little D right there. How cool. And this I remember, if I remember correctly, if I go to my t-shirt collection, because uh, I saw them on this tour at Radio City Music Hall back with uh, Dockin' opening up, because Dockin' opened for everybody in the 80s. Uh, this was on the t-shirt itself, so it's very cool to have this one. Finally, on vinyl, in my collection, and, uh, you know, very happy to have it. So that's that. Got to be careful putting this one back in because it does have that little pop-up in there. Like I said, uh, yeah, it doesn't have the t-shirt that I picked up from the tour, but it has other ones that they were selling at the time. I always wonder, I wonder if I, if I wrote to this address at this point, if they would actually, uh, actually return any information. Maybe I should drop them a note and see if that happens. That'd be, inter that'd be an interesting experiment, you know, 30 years on. Uh, so the next thing, and I was just about wrapped up at the record show, and I actually told my buddy Goose, who I went with, that, uh, yeah, I think I'm done. Let's head out. And he was checking with one vendor, so I just kind of flipped around and was, you know, basically killing time, just, you know, flipping flipping records. And I came across this. And if you've watched my show before, you know that I'm a big fan of Mike Monroe, the biggest gentleman in rock and roll, Mike Monroe. I had, had the pleasure of interviewing him. Super cool dude. His band, Hanoi Rocks. And this is the Dead by Christmas album. Once again, not in the best condition. As far as the album sleeve goes, I couldn't resist it though. You know, it's, I don't have this either on cassette, CD, or vinyl. Now I have it on vinyl. This is a two CD in a gatefold there. Lots of photos, promo pics, and uh, makeup, cigarettes, everything that you'd associate with The Rocks. And this was released on Raw Power way back in 1986. Um, and this one's pretty basic, you know, White labels, you know, black vinyl, inner sleeves are plain, you know, nothing, nothing to see there. But it does have a great track listing over the two albums. It really is a, a fantastic greatest hits album. Uh, it's got live stuff, different versions of stuff. It's got Oriental Beat Live, Back to Mystery City Live. Uh, it's got a Calypso version of Malibu Beach, uh, MC Baby, Village Girl, Taxi Driver, which is one of my favorite tunes, Tragedy. Uh, of course, the title track, Dead by Christmas, uh, Don't You Never Leave Me, Under My Wheels, the Alice Cooper cover on here, I Feel Alright, the Stooges cover on here, uh, Cheyenne, Whispers in the Dark, Visitor Live, I mean, it really is, Loves an Injection, Lightning Bar Blues, I mean, if you see this one out there somewhere, if you find it on Discogs, and you don't know where to start with the rocks, this is a fantastic place to start as far as the Hanoi Rocks go. Uh, Dead by Christmas by the Hanoi Rocks. And there's Michael Monroe looking more like Marilyn Monroe than himself. Uh, next thing we have, okay, is a little disc, okay? And this is Jane Getter Premonition, okay? And you might be like, well, who the hell is Jane Getter? And who the hell is Jane Getter Premonition? Well, Jane Getter Premonition is a very interesting group. They're a New York-based group uh, out of the Bronx, believe it or not, okay? Uh, Jane and her husband, Adam Holzman, live in 
the Bronx. Adam, uh, interesting dude, very cool dude, uh, is part of Stephen Wilson's band, okay? And in addition to that, he's played with Miles Davis. And actually, even cooler than that, his dad is Jack Holzman. Jack Holzman is, or was, the head of Electra Records. So you're talking about a guy that's been around music his whole life. And this is his and his wife's band. His wife, Jane, is a phenomenal guitarist. How phenomenal of a guitarist is she? Well, the person that plays with her on this album, all right, on Amalia, all right, is, sit down. If you don't know this already, you need to take a seat. The second guitarist on this album is Alex Skolnick of Testament. That's right. I didn't stutter. Alex Skolnick of Testament. You know, in addition to doing his work with Testament, Alex has always been, you know, out there and about. Did stuff with Trans-Siberian Orchestra, tours with them. And you figure that's kind of like where he goes. This album is a phenomenal mix of rock, jazz, fusion, metal, you name it. This, this is like if you took a bunch of musical genres and threw it in a blender. Uh, so you have that. And the reason that I, I grabbed this one, you know, I, I thought I had it and then I checked my collection and I didn't, uh, is because she has a new one coming out, um, I believe in about 10 days. It's called Division World. And if I'm certain, it has the same personnel. So you've got the, the disc there inside photo, rear photo, and obviously the booklet here. And in addition to, to Alex Skolnick, you can check here. I'll hold this up. You also got Stu Ham, all right, and Chad Wackerman. All right, Stu's a phenomenal bass player and Chad Wackerman, amazing drummer. Uh, also Mark Egan and, and uh, Gene Lake. So there's the credits there. And you can see there that Alex Skolnick is prominently listed right there. Uh, yeah, so if you want to check out Alex Skolnick doing something other than pure shred, uh, check him out, Trade and Licks with Jane Getter on Jane Getter Premonition on Amalia. And keep an eye out next week for Division World, which I've heard a couple of tracks from. And uh, I've already got it on pre-order, so I'm waiting for it to show up. Unfortunately, uh, Jane's albums haven't been made available on, uh, on anything but CD or download. So I must have been listening to the download for a couple of years. This is her second, third one's coming out in a few, few, uh, few days, week, 10 days. So looking forward to that. If they release this on vinyl, I'm gonna snap them up as well. All right, last thing I have for the week, okay? Uh, you know, I have everything by Rush on CD and I've been doing my best to, uh, to pick up stuff from them on, on vinyl, okay? And this is one of the ones that I picked up from them on vinyl. Uh, it seems that the live albums are easier to find on vinyl than the um than the uh studio albums the studio albums go for a ridiculous ridiculous amount of money uh i've seen things like snakes and arrows uh going for like 150 bucks uh clockwork angels over 100 bucks luckily i have that on on vinyl which is great this is the time machine tour from 2011 uh, it's the fur, full concert available on vinyl for the very first time. It's on 180 gram vinyl. Comes with a download code. This was released on Roadrunner Records, uh, and this is the you know the whole Rush show as it was back for this tour. Uh, if you're familiar with the tour, it's basically uh, them going through you know Rush's greatest hits, so to speak. Uh, kicks off with the uh, the fantastic opener, Spirit of the Radio. Goes into Time Stand Still. Presto, stick it out. Working Them Angels, Leave That Thing Alone, Faithless, Be You To Be, Free Will, Marathon, Subdivisions. Then you've got the uh, the, the classic set from uh, Moving Pictures of Tom Sawyer, Red Barchetta, YYZ, Limelight, Camera Eye, Witch Hunt, and Vital Signs. So you get the whole album, whole and entire live right here. Uh, then you've got Caravan and Moto Perpetuo uh, featuring Love For Sale, which is the drum solo. Uh, O'Malley's Break, which is another solo in there as well. Closer to the Heart, the 2112 Overture with Temples of Searings. Far Cry, 
La Villa Strangiata, which is my favorite, favorite, favorite um, instrumental by Rush, and closing it out with the classic Working Man. So let's take a look at this. Basic Black. So we won't take a look at many of the albums there, you know, with the Time Machine logo right in there. Let's, let's get that up a little closer. You got the clock on the back. You know, the runes, rune clock right there. And uh, has a little story here about the Rush live album. News of a live Rush album has always been greeted with great enthusiasm. You bet damn straight it has been. Uh, and the interior of these are, are black as opposed to just plain white cardboard. And we'll, uh, it looks like there's a book here as well. Now, there's another album. So we've got that. Got the download code there, another album. Photo from the live set. Looks like each of these is a sleeve. Another photo from the live set there. Album artwork for the album they were out supporting. And then you have more live photos and the back which shows the set listing there. All right, so that's everything there on the Rush Time Stand Still Live in Cleveland 2011 album. Uh, as always, you know, I want to thank everybody for stopping by, spending a little time with me. I really do appreciate it. I'm really happy over the past few weeks I've watched this channel, you know, basically double in size, which is fantastic. Not that there were a ton of people watching it, but it is great to see that people are getting turned on to what I'm sharing with you. Uh, if there's something you'd like to see me do, do a show on, you know, drop it below. I probably have it in my collection. I have, I have a fairly large collection. I'm always uh, picking up new stuff as well. Uh, in the coming weeks, you know, things to look forward to. Uh, Ace Freely has a new album coming out this week, as does Motorhead. I'm going to be dedicating a good portion of the next episode to, you know, two aces. The Ace of Spades Lemmy and the Ace of Kiss, Ace Freely. Uh, I've got a very interesting uh, Ace Freely story from back when I was in radio at uh, WRTN in New Rochelle about um, the time that I had the opportunity to interview Ace. Uh, I even have a photo. I, I wasn't big on photos back then. I didn't have a camera. We didn't have cameras in our phones. We didn't have phones back then, you know, cell phones. Uh, so. I do have an actual photo from back then with that I'm going to add to the end of that video. Uh, so, you know, next episode will be about the two aces, Lemmy and Ace Freely. And um, then after that, I'm going to do another uh, throwback episode of uh, bands from the 80s. You know, more of the uh, overlooked, underrated hair bands from that era. I uh, got a lot of feedback on that, so I'm going to throw another one up there. Oddly enough, I realized that when I did that episode... The band that inspired me to do it, I didn't include. So now I have to do another one. So that's that for this week. Thank you so, so much for uh, checking out the channel. Like I say, peace, one love, and music to all the crate diggers, record collectors, and music lovers out there. I'm out. Peace.